All right, welcome everybody. 3.2 standard deviation. Let's do it. So um, what I'd like you to do for this lesson, so like I said, chapters one to three, pretty straightforward, right? Nothing too crazy so far. But this is where um, we'll really have to think about it and I'm gonna have to do a good job teaching this to you guys. So I ask you to, be pa to have patience, right? So 3.2, measures of variation. So first let's have this in our notes. The range is the uh, maximum data value minus the minimum data value. Standard deviation, this is the big topic for this lesson. The set of data values that deviate away from the mean, okay? And we'll dive in what this means. Here, um, for standard deviation, this is, uh, and my notes are a little sloppy right now, but here, this is a sample standard deviation with little s, and to calculate it, we take the square root of each data value minus the mean, we're gonna take the summation of it, square it, divided by n minus one. So ignore this for now. Just just have this in your notes and in the next video, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about how to actually solve standard deviation. This video, I'm just gonna explain the idea of standard deviation and then how we can interpret it, okay? So that's the idea. So let's continue here. Um, the question I'll ask is, what percentage of people are taller than LeBron James? And LeBron James is six foot eight inches tall. And what about, of all the people in the whole world, how many people are taller than Yao Ming? And Yao Ming was a Chinese basketball player and he was seven foot six inches, right? So um, for any set of data values, the you're gonna have a mean, a standard deviation can be calculated, right? And what I'd like you to do is just have this in your notes for now and remember I ask to have patience for this lesson, right? So essential question, how much does, let me fix this, how much does the data vary from the average or the mean, right? So standard deviation is a measure of spread. How spread out the data is. A low standard deviation tells us the data is closely clustered around the mean. A high standard deviation indicates that the data is dispersed over a wider range of values. So again, I ask, be patient, and I'll go through this, right? Let's just have this in our notes. Okay, next part. Standard deviation is used when we have somewhat of a normal bell curve. So a normal curve looking something like this, right? When our data values um, you know, you have some sort of mean in the center and everything looks nice, right? Here, standard deviation is commonly used to understand whether a specific data point is standard and expected or unusual and unexpected, okay? So let's have this in our notes. All right, now this, what I'd like you to do is take your time on a brand new piece of paper. Uh, please have... Oh yeah, we're gonna have this. So ho hold on, hold on. Uh, so for the next part of your notes, uh, data, I'm sorry, data points distance from the mean can be measured by the number of standard deviation that is, sorry, data points distance from the mean can be measured by the number of standard deviations that is above to the right or below to the left of the mean. So if we have some, store, some sort of standard bell curve, Remember the idea of standard deviation is the set of data values that deviate from the mean. The mean is the center, okay? And the standard deviation talks about how much spread is from the center. So if our center and our mean is over here, this is one standard deviation to the right, one standard deviation to the left, two standard deviations from the right, two from the left. Or you could say, above or below, right? A data point that is beyond a certain number of standard deviations from the mean is significantly or below the average. It helps us understand if a result is statistically significant or part of a expected variation, okay? And like I said, if you've been writing a lot of notes, please be patient or have patience, right? Okay, now here, this empirical rule for data values states that if I have data values that are one standard deviation from the mean and we have some normal distribution, 
it states that 68% of my data values should be one standard deviation from the mean. If I have two standard deviations from the mean, then 95% of my data values should be over here. And if I have three standard deviations, 99.7% of my data values will be three standard deviations from the mean. Okay? So please have the student notes. Now, I have to actually show you what this all means, right? So let me try and go through an example with you guys. Um, let's imagine a really good example is, and let me, let's have this in our notes, right? Try and grab a piece of paper and have it uh, horizontal. But let's say we have um, height for US for males in the US. Okay, we're going to talk about this. So let's say that the mean, so notice how if we're going to talk about height for all males in the United States, we're going to be talking about a population, right? So for population, what's the symbol for population? Notice what is the symbol for population? It'll be sigma. So notice that, I'm sorry, not sigma. For um, population, it'll be a uh, mu. Remember that for mean, let's say that the mean height for some male in the United States is five foot, 10 inches, okay? If you took all the males in the United States and you got all their heights, and we're gonna say that the mean, that if I were to add up all the heights and divide it by all the males, that we get somewhere around five foot, 10 inches, okay? And then we're gonna also say it, the standard deviation, sigma, is somewhere around three inches. So what does that mean? Let's draw this picture here, right? And we're gonna have some normal distribution. And we're gonna state that this is the center, right? Now the center is where the mean is. So what is the mean of all the heights of the males in the United States? It'll be right here, which will be mu. And this is what this is. Let me put this in blue. This is, I'm sorry, let me put this in black. This is five foot, 10 inches, right? This is the, this is the center, okay? Now, what is one standard deviation? Notice that if we go over here and we go over here, one standard deviation to the right will be, what is five foot 10 plus three inches Notice that is six foot one inches, right? Because uh, there are 12 inches. So if I have five, 10, it goes five, 10, 11, 12, six foot one, right? Notice that this has to be mu plus sigma, okay? Because this is the mu, this is the, the, the mean, plus one standard deviation. What's this one? This is gonna be mu minus sigma. And this will be what? five foot seven inches and because we have a normal distribution right remember when we talked about in chapter 2.2 when we talked about the types of uh curves right we had a uh, skew we had skew right skew left but we also had normal curve right what were examples of normal curves uh, are, what are examples of data values that must have a normal curve? Height is one of them. So notice we have some normal distribution. And what is this saying over here? What can you interpret from the previous example, from, I'm sorry, from the empirical rule of data values? Here, 68% of all US males must be between six foot one and five foot seven. Let me write that down, right? According, so this is very good. According to the empirical rule, 68% of all US males are between five foot, seven inches, and six feet, 
one inches tall. Okay. And if you didn't know this, this tick, that means feet and the double tick is inches, right? So this is what this is saying within standard deviation. It's saying that 68% of my data values have to be over here. Okay. What about the next one? If I, this is just one standard deviation. What if I wanted to do another standard deviation? Well, let's say if I go to another standard deviation, this is mu plus two sigma. Because here, this is three inches, and then this is another three inches. So this is six foot, four inches. And then what's over here, this is five foot, four inches. And this has to be mu minus two sigma, okay? Now what, according to the empirical rule, and I realize my bad, I realize that this pen isn't very good. I'll use a, I'll use a different pen. Um, according to the empirical rule, what can you calculate? What can you uh, infer? So according to the empirical rule, 95% of all US males are between five foot four inches and six foot four inches tall, okay? And that's the idea of standard deviation. It's how far are you from the mean, right? You're gonna have, it's just, that's just how, um, oh, let me get something. Yeah, this is 68% is one standard deviation, 95% is two standard deviations. What's the next thing we're gonna talk about? Well, what about three standard deviations, right? Three standard deviation states, try and go for the next sentence by yourself, right? Here, what would three standard deviations be? Let's try and extend this a little more. And then if this is one, two, three, let me get this here. So this is mu plus three sigma, which is six foot, seven inches and this is mu minus three sigma and this is five foot one inch right we know that 99.7 percent of all males are between five foot one inch and six foot seven inches there are very, very, very few people who are shorter than 5'1", but are also taller than 6'7". Those are your extreme outliers, right? The outliers are over here. Past two significant, uh, past two significant uh, standard deviations, okay? I hope this was okay. And I ask again to have patience because I know this idea take some time to sink in, right? Um, let's try and continue on, okay? Let's do an example. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Should we continue on? Yeah, this is what I wrote over here in the notes. The 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So 68% of the data values falls under one standard deviation, 95% follow from two standard deviations, three standard deviations, yeah? And yeah, this is the same example I kind of gave to you over here. Um, yeah. So when we look at something like this, the original question I had for you was, how many people are taller than LeBron James or Yao Ming? Not very many people, right? And this idea of significant values is uh, represented here. So a value is considered significant if it's higher than two standard deviations or lower than two standard deviations. The idea with the idea with this is, for example, let's. What is two standard uh, two standard deviations? What if we're here? If you see somebody just walking, right, and they are, let's say. Five, if they're somewhere here, let's say they're five eight, right? If you see somebody who's five foot eight inches tall, you you just say, okay, just a normal person is five foot eight inches tall. But what if you were to walk on the street 
and you saw somebody and they were six foot four or six foot five, then you're going to say instinctively, oh, wow, this person is tall. Okay. This is a tall person compared to every single human being in the whole world. Or if you see somebody who is within this height category, let's say if you see somebody who is five feet tall, then you say, oh, this person is shorter than the average population, right? And that's the idea of significant values. You're going to say that a value is significant or it stands out if it's past two standard deviations from the mean. Okay. That is it for today's lesson. Um, I promise you in the next lesson, we're going to do an exam. We're going to do example problems with standard deviation. We're going to do two together to get a better feel for this, because I know this was a lot to take in in one lesson and it's online, right? It's not in person. Okay. And we'll continue with chapter 3.2 with variation and spread. Uh, we'll do it tomorrow in a different lesson, but in the next video I have, we'll go over some, we'll go over a practice problem together to get a better feel of this standard deviation. Okay. I'll see you.